Hey everyone, what's up? How's it going? It's Finite MTG. We are back with a Vintage Masters Draft. This is going to be my third one in the format. So far, I've done two drafts, which would make sense mathematically, and I have two trophies. So I'm pretty stoked about this. Format's treated me well so far, and I am hoping uh, things are going to continue on that path. I think I'm just going to take Goblin Trenches out of this pack. It's a very powerful card. I'm going to have to read this one, though. Hmm... So it's a 5 mana big guy, probably, and you can pay 3 mana, uh, shrink it, and shrink another creature. I think I'm just going to take the trenches. It doesn't even matter that this card is multicolored. It's so, so strong if you can get it to work for you. Uh, honorable mention, I think, Solar Blast. It's probably uh, one of the next best cards. Fintorn Elves, also a notable card in the pack, but I'm really, really liking aggro in this format. Uh, both times I've been 2-0, I played against aggro in the finals, and both of my draft decks have been aggro so far. So let's take the trenches. Baleful Strix now. I'm going to check the price on that one. So unfortunately, the Strix is only about a ticket, and it's pretty far away from what I would <laughs> want to do here. Nice red-white into blue-black. Um, but I think Mana War, even though it's somewhat far away, uh, I could take Kindle and try to stay on plan here. I think Mana War is just... Very, very powerful card, um, so I'm fine taking that. Other cards in this pack, uh, Chainer's Edict, I think is okay. Elvish Aberration, feel kind of similarly about. Uh, there is a Storm deck in this format. You have Storm cards at common, like this one. Uh, but I think the Storm deck is pretty bad, and by that I mean it's pretty fun. I think it's what you do um, <laughs> when you're not necessarily trying to trophy. All right, in this pack... Uh, not a ton of super powerful stuff. Burning Wish, which is kind of cool. We can check the price on that one as well. Exile, Goblin Commando, which I think is a fine card. Yeah, Burning Wish, that's another uh, whiff in terms of money cards, but no surprise there, as it's already third pick. I think we're just going to take Goblin Commando and see if we can stay on plan with the trenches. Uh, Brainstorm and Exile are both fine cards. I think the Cycle Land is pretty good too. Um... But yeah, I don't see a huge reason to change things up from my first pick here. Okay, seeing a couple good cards in this one. Uh, one of them is going to be the Pillaging Horde, and one of them is Wild Mongrel. So Wild Mongrel, it's a strong card in general. It's insane when you can put it in the Madness decks. There's also an Ophidian, which is a good card. And I do have a Man of War, which is not only on color, but kind of an on-theme tempo card to go with the Ophidian. Uh, I think I'm just going to try to take this Pillaging Horde, as I already have two red cards. Uh, but that could be wrong. I think it's correct to pass the Mongrel. The only question is, do I want this Ophidian? I think I'd rather stay open between red-blue and red-white by taking the Horde. Alright, in this pack, what do we have? Uh, I'm looking at this card, which is a solid 2. This card's a solid 3. Uh, Mesmeric Fiend, that's a good one as well. I like the Phantom Nomad. I think I'm probably just going to take this Chartooth Cougar, though. The cards that cycle for a land type are really good. Uh, there's also... Mm, maybe I should take this card. Keeps me open. It's a solid 3-drop. Goes into any deck. I think I'm going to take the Cougar over it, but I think it's actually pretty close between those two. Uh, Phantom Nomad is a card I like as well, especially if I were to end up red-white. And note that there are zero blue cards in this pack. Uh, I would love to wheel the idol happened once before, but I don't expect it's going to happen again. Okay, so we're seeing some black aggressive cards now. Um, saw one of these last pick, as well as one of those. Uh, Urborg Uprising is a good value card as well. Brain Freeze now, um, but I think we're off of that plan. So my options here are take another Chartooth Cougar, leave myself open to the trenches, or take one of these black aggressive cards. Uh, right now my curve is pretty high. I think I'm actually just going to take uh, this 2 mana 2-2 two, two flanking can't block. Um, just trying to figure out what's open and not lock myself into trenches with zero white cards. Okay. In this pack, uh, there's an Arrogant Worm that would go nicely with the Mongrel we passed. Eternal Dragon, which I think is a pretty good card, but it is a 7-drop. Uh, Noble Templar as well. Basically no reason to play black, though, in this pack. I think Scrivener is a pretty strong card, too. 
Uh, I mean, this plane cycles, right? So it's not really that different from Noble Templar, except for the part where it's a 5-5 flyer. It's one more mana, so it's that much harder to cast, hitting 7. But I think this is a pretty late dragon, uh, and I want to keep my options open with the trenches. Okay, in this pack, uh, I'm not seeing a ton of cards I love. Spark Spray and Secluded Step are fine. I don't think this is Burning Deck. Uh, there's a Buzzard here too, but I think we're trying to move off of Black. Uh, I'm still not sure about White. If I were sure, I think I would take the Land, but I'm going to start with the Spark Spray here. I think Red has been the most open throughout this pack, and let's just stay on this plan. Okay. In this pack, uh, Benevolent Bodyguard is fine. Predatory Night Stalker is probably decent, but again, you have diminishing returns with your 5 mana cards. Um, I think I'm going to take Skywing Aven. I think it's better than Benevolent Bodyguard, and even though I have more of an incentive to play uh, Red-White, I think this card is just significantly better by enough than the Bodyguard that I'm going to take it. Could be a little too much waffling here, but I'm not even sure I would main the Bodyguard. Okay, now we're seeing Chainer's Edict as what I think is probably the best card in the pack. I uh, could take this Goblin Patrol, could take the Deft Blade Elite, uh, could take a Falter as well. The last deck I had Falter in did not impress me at all. Uh, I think I'm just going to take this Goblin Patrol, continue uh, taking fine medium red cards. Okay. So Burning Wish now, probably not likely to get anything very good for me. Um, Wall of Diffusion is not a card I want in my deck, as you may have guessed uh, up to this point. Cruel Bargain's pretty good. I think the Foil is still probably worthless. In that case, we're taking land. Okay, in this pack, Reckless Charge or Mist Moon Griffin. Miss Moon Griffin is pretty sweet with the Eternal Dragon, um, and I think it's a fine card where I don't necessarily want Reckless Charge in my deck. Okay, it's another Ascari that's pretty late. I do like that. So we have outs to play some other colors here if we need to, but most likely we're going to end up red-white. Seal of Cleansing, fine sideboard card. Ooh, World Gorger Dragon. Animate Dead is in the set, <laughs> but it's also a 7-drop. Not really what I'm all about trying to do at this point. Um, six mana, seven, seven flying trample, though. It's pretty huge. Um, I could just take it. It feels so bad, though, if it doesn't work. Like, if they hit this with an enchantment removal spell, it's essentially worthless. So it's either that or a beetleback chief, I think, for me. Um, I really have no idea how good this dragon is if you're trying to use it fairly. I mean, it's a 6-mana 7-7 seven, seven flyer, so it feels like probably wins the game. Um, I guess I'll take it. I do like the idea of randomly winning a game, but we're getting to a point where I have a lot of expensive cards. We do have outs to be red-black. We do pick up an animate dead um, that can lead to an infinite mana combo. Okay, essentially nothing for us in this pack. Uh, Gerard's Battle Cry, I guess, is good with Goblin Trenches. Otherwise, some of the best cards in the pack are Urnum Jin, um, Wild Mongrel, Deep Analysis, Elephant Guide. Um, I think green is the one color we're not interested in speculating on here. Um, so I guess I'm taking the Battle Cry, and I'm not super happy about it. But like I said, I do think it's good with the trenches. Uh, Noble Templar could be fine if it wheels, but I think Battle Cry is not a replaceable card. It is a rare. Okay, we're seeing another Pillaging Horde now. Um, it's probably fine. We have two four drops at this point. There's another Chartooth Cougar as well, and those could be going up in value with a triple red card in our deck that wants us to hit our land drops. Um, yeah, I could see the Cougar over the Horde here. 
And the problem with the land cycling cards is when you already have something to do on turn two, it starts getting pretty awkward. Um, but I think I'm going to... Hmm. If we end up in red-white, then I'm going to want Battle Screech in my 4-mana slot. Uh, this is pretty close. I'm going to take the Horde. Okay. Wow. Really good cards for us here. Uh, in the Banalish Trapper, Solar Blast, Fire Blast, all the blasts. I think we're probably locked into white at this point. Um, and I do think the Trapper's narrowly better than like Solar Blast. Um, Fire Blast probably coming after that. And yeah, not super interested in the other cards in this pack. We have actually no two drops somehow, so pick up the first Trapper. Okay, um, Flowstone Hellion is a card that's impressed me, but I just said I have no two drops really, so I think I'll be taking Phantom Nomad out of this pack. Goblin General I think is a good card in the committed Goblin decks, uh, but that's not where we seem to be. I think I'd be happy to play this Hellion if it wheeled, but we've got a bunch of stuff higher up on the curve for now, so let's just fill out the low end. Or I guess I could just take one of these now. Um, Goblin Goon, I don't think I love that card. I think I'm just going to take this Hellion. Um, being able to play a 5 mana threat that can hit for 5 the turn you play it is really strong. Okay. Um, strong black cards in this pack, the Laquatus' Champion and the Blazing Spectre. I think we're going to take an Exile. Uh, I don't love any of these cards. And yeah, we're a little low on removal right now, so I think Exile is perfectly acceptable. Uh, the one problem with the card is not all the decks in this format like attacking, and one of the main decks that does like attacking is Mono White, and you're not going to have too many hits uh, with your Exile against Mono White. Okay, this is one of my favorite two drops in this format. Uh, it's probably second to the Banalish Trapper, and it's the Soltari Trooper. Uh, it's effectively 2 mana 2-2 two, two unblockable. There are not too many shadow creatures going around in this format, so just a nice, well-costed evasive threat. And now we're seeing a Noble Templar. That's pretty good. Get as many of these land cycling guys as we can. Skirk Prospector or Caldera Lake. I guess we'll take the lake. Um, I don't think I'm ever putting this card in my deck. And Maybe if we get like a Prophetic Bolt or something, I could consider splashing it. Okay, Radiance Judgment, I think is a fine card. Um, I'll start it in the main, but we could end up cutting it. In this pack, Mist Moon Griffin number two, or Goblin Commando number two. Um, I don't love the Griffin, but uh, I think I'm really unlikely to want two of these, even if I pick up like a Goblin Matron. Okay, Goblin Patrol. Not sure we're playing either of these, but for now we'll put it in the main. Buzzard is solid, and a wall can hang out in the sideboard. All right, so best card in this pack I think is probably going to be another Trapper over the Kindle, but I do like Kindle. Uh, Fire Blast, honorable mention, and yeah, Magister of Worth, super solid card, but does not go with what we're trying to do here, so let's take the Trapper and Beyond with it. Uh, we need some three drops in this deck. <laughs> okay, Beetleback Chief. It's a decent four drop. I think I want the first one over the land or the Templar. I don't really love either of those. Um, what are the good cards in this pack? There aren't a ton. Some decent evasive black cards. Predatory Night Stalker, I think, is probably solid. All right. So in this pack, we're seeing another Beetleback Chief, a Gust Cloak Harrier, and a Solar Blast. Um, I think Solar Blast is better than Gust Cloak Harrier, but I'm in a pretty peculiar spot right here where I have zero three drops, and I do have a couple trappers for removal. Uh, so I think it's actually more important that I take the Harrier, not to mention that because I'm taking really the only good white card out of this pack, there are a few decent red cards uh, that I'm passing, and I'm somewhat likely to wheel one of them. Okay, I am not a huge fan of Afterlife, and I'm going to avoid putting that card in my deck if I can. Uh, Benevolent Bodyguard is playable, 
There's also another Chartooth Cougar here. Um, don't think I'm looking at second beetle back chief at this point. Curve is just too high. Um, I don't really think I have something I... Uh, I could protect some of my bigger flyers in the late game with um, the bodyguard, but I'm just going to take the cougar. I think this deck really wants to hit its land drops. Um, <laughs> meanwhile, I have a card that wants to sack lands, but still. Okay, in this pack, um, I think Hulking Goblin is basically not a card I'm willing to put in my deck. If you put flanking on it, then it would be totally fine, but it doesn't have flanking, so there you go. I think Imperial Armor is okay. Uh, I don't think it's good, but that's how it goes. I'm going to probably put it into my sideboard to start here. Don't really have enough evasive threats to abuse it. All right, so we are seeing a Solar Blast now, and I'm pretty happy to pick up one of these. I think it's much better than something like Exile. Uh, Spark Spray, Radiance Judgment, also in the pack. I think a Chroma's Blessing is probably medium, not very exciting. So, Solar Blast it is. Soltari Emissary, it's a card I'm essentially always happy to put in my white decks. It's just a 2-mana two 2-1, two and it can gain Evasion. I think it's worse than Soltari Trooper. And I think it's probably better than Phantom Nomad. Um, that changes a bit if you're in white-green and you have some way to enhance the power and toughness on this because once you remove the last counter, if it's still alive because of, say, an elephant guide, it doesn't really die. So that's pretty good. But yeah, nice emissary for me here. Okay. So now we're seeing a lightning rift. I don't think we have enough cycling for that. One, two, three, four... Five. Uh, it's actually pretty close. And the Solar Blast makes six. We might be wheeling something else too. Yeah, I guess I'm going to try it over the Phantom Nomad. I know Phantom Nomad's a solid card and it would be fine in the deck, but I want more data on this Lightning Rift. And I do have a bunch of cycling cards that I think I'm willing to uh, try it out. So we'll take it. Okay, there's another cycling card in the Spark Spray. Um, probably happy to start two spark sprays over like the first goblin patrol, for instance. Reckless charge, I don't think is super exciting. Gilded light could be fine too, uh, but I think it's more of a sideboard card. It's a little unfortunate because I would like one of them, but I wouldn't like to main deck one. Okay, noble templar now, rewarding me further for that lightning rift pick, which is nice. Uh, yeah. Okay, beetleback chief number two, we'll take it, but. I doubt we're going to play both. Radiance Judgment now. Yeah, I mean, that's another cycler that I was not thinking of when we took the Rift earlier, so, sure. Uh, I'll take the land. Go with our blue-red land in the sideboard, and we'll take another Seal of Cleansing. Someone can have their nice last pick gush here. And a cycle land. So one of the fun things to note about Lightning Rift um, is because it has classic old templating, it is symmetrical. And it's not symmetrical in the sense that either player can get a shock out of it, but uh, when either player cycles, you can get a shock out of it. So that's exactly the kind of symmetry I want when I'm playing with this card. All right, moving on to cuts. I think we're going to cut these Goblin Patrols. I don't love Double Radiance Judgment in the main, but with the Lightning Rift, there is a temptation to play it. Um, I think I am going to play a million six drops. The question is then, how many lands do I want? I think at least 17, maybe even 18. But let's start going over my creatures from best to worst. So, Trapper's definitely up there. Trooper, Emissary, Harrier, really anything evasive. Uh, Mist Moon Griffin might be a little too slow. I think I like all these cycling cards a ton. Um, these cards are all somewhat medium. I think I'm going to play the Nomad and probably the Pillaging Hordes, maybe one Horde and one Chief, something along those lines. I'm going to try this thing too, I think. We'll see. All right, over here. So we don't really have any cards to go wide except for the Goblin Trenches. 
Um, that's kind of a non-bow with pumping three mana into something anyway. We were hoping for some Battle Screeches. I've had three Battle Screeches in both of my previous decks, but unfortunately we saw zero this whole draft. Um, Exile, I think that's probably a cuttable card. I really just want to maximize this Lightning Rift, which maybe is wrong because we only have the one, but it seems sweet to me. So I guess we'll try cutting that Exile, though we are kind of moving a red-white control direction, and I'll move all of these things into the sideboard as well, just for now. Okay. So I think roughly 25% of the time we're going to be playing this instead of cycling it, so I'll call these all two drop spells, which is effectively what it is if I'm cycling. Um, I do think my deck is actually a lot more defensive than I thought. It has a hard time killing quickly, uh, it has a decent amount of removal. Um, yeah. Maybe this thing is just too bad. It's really cool, but with multiple trappers, um, effectively as like onboard removal spells, it seems like losing all my other permanents is just a huge downside, so I guess it's just going to hang on the sideboard. Um, could try another chief, could try another horde. Really could go a few different ways here. If I am playing double chief, there is somewhat of a temptation to play the battle cry, but I think that still doesn't quite make sense for where we are. Um, I could think about a Mist Moon Griffin. It's pretty medium. I don't really think Phantom Nomad does a ton in this deck, but maybe it's still good enough, especially because I'm starting to think we are more defensive. Um, yeah, we could try like a Griffin and a Commando, just put in some two-for-ones, uh, two essentially. And just see how that goes. This is not a five-mana card, but whatever. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think this deck is fine. Probably don't want more than 17 lands with, what, 1, 2, 3, 4 common land cyclers and then one rare land cycler as well. Uh, something that's great when you have land cyclers like this, um, and something I had in my last deck, which I guess I will show you right now, is the original duels. So if you have a Plateau, um, Plateau was actually one of the MVPs of this deck. I was pretty low on red sources, and I had double red in the Beetleback Chief, double red in Cycling the Solar Blast, um, and so I got to cycle Noble Templar and find the Plateau, even though it has Planes Cycling, because it's not basic Planes, it's just Planes as a type. Uh, so this was another nice 3-0 deck. Obviously you see the triple Battle Screech there. I'm hoping this deck can do the same, but if it can't, no big deal. This deck is still sweet, I'm excited to try out the Lightning Rift. Nine eight, that well, seems about right to me. I'm not going to look at it super closely. Just assume that Magic Online knows what it's talking about, which could be a fatal mistake. But now take a screenshot and we'll hop into round number one. All right, we're back with round number one. We're gonna play first. This hand is pretty good. Got a double white card and two white sources, not to mention a few other cheap cards, which will be helpful in the early game. Happy to lead on a Sultari Trooper here. Might be a little different if I were on the draw, but it's not a decision I'm going to have to worry about. We might be uh, playing the Nomad and cycling the Judgment turn four, depending. Okay, no plays.
play this Harrier. Oh, I could have Power Sync for one? Sure. Yeah. Figured that out just in time. I think I'd rather have that be countered than the Trooper, not to mention I got in an extra 2 damage from playing my 2-drop. Turn 4. Frantic Search. wonder if we're playing against Storm. I doubt they're playing Madness in Asper Colors. If they do seem to be Storm, pretty happy to cycle the Judgment. Let's see what they discarded. Um, okay, not a whole lot. These trade, which is not ideal for me. Ooh, but this guy's pretty big. So I guess we will trade. We do get somewhat of a mana advantage here. I don't think Frantic Search is a card you should put in your deck unless you have Madness Synergies or unless you are playing Storm. So, not totally sure what my opponent's up to. But apparently they think we're racing, which is interesting. Uh, I don't love any of the cards in my hand, so I'm fine pitching one of them to this Horde. Yes. Okay, would have rather discarded the planes, but that's how it goes. possible, but unlikely they get to a position where they're double pumping this, and then we can hit it with Radiance Judgment. I do not know what that was. That was Cloud of Fairies, and they cycled it. Sure. I think they're... yeah. So they just missed two damage effectively. Ooh, that was a good draw. So now we get to kill this and get in for seven. Seems good to me. Don't think there's a mana tithe in the set. No modern legal cards at the time were included. So that clears the way nicely. Suddenly I'm pretty happy with discarding the uh, Phantom Nomad over a land and my opponent's taking seven damage. So that's good. There is a Wrath uh, that they could have. I think it's called Winds of Wrath, uh, but Wrath with an R, not a W this time. That would be annoying. But right now they're dead on board, so they have to do something. If it happens to have four power, like if it's exactly Kezardrix, then uh, we could get them here. Okay, so they reanimated it. Not, Not the, the most, most exciting, exciting thing I've ever seen. seen. I, think I think we're, we're going to cycle the Radiance Judgment at this point. Rather than blow up our own 5-5 five five and like 3 for 1 ourselves. <laughs> Tough call though. Um, I guess I'm playing the land here. I don't really know what discard spells they can have, but I don't want to cycle the Cougar. If it were regular cycling, I would consider it, but... Uh, actually, there's not really a reason to attack with this. That was kind of a poor play. If I draw a removal spell and they can block my other threats, then I'm going to feel kind of stupid for doing this. But hopefully we won't be in that position. They do have two lethal threats to worry about. Okay. Two cards in hand. Sure. Double blue? Five mana even. Okay, Scrivener. Yeah, that's annoying. So they can trade and chomp. Guess we just attack with a 5-5. Five five. They're getting back. What is this? Frantic search. Sure. There's not too much I can do about that. And it turns out it doesn't matter whether or not um, we attack with the trooper, because if we draw a removal, they die regardless. That was not a removal. So I guess we... So we could force this trade, which I think is still good. So I want to get this regenerator off the battlefield, and then we have two lethal threats for them to worry about again. 
That seems, seems good, good to me. me. So in this matchup, uh, we might want a second 4-mana 5-5. Five, five. The card has been pretty good for us so far. Assuming this is... Uh, actually, I don't know what this is. A Drain Life, maybe? Oh, Magister of Worth. Dear God. That is quite bad for me. Condemnation is the Wrath. And it happens even if it's a tie. Yeah, so... It's doing, doing good, good here if I descent. Eternal Dragon. <clears throat> it's pretty good if we draw a land. I think we're just playing a cougar out here, though. Frantic Search, sure. It is card disadvantage. It's not quite card disadvantage when you pick it back up with Scrivener, but I don't know. I just don't love the card. I guess it gets rid of excess lands, which at this point of the game is pretty relevant. Bad River, sure. See if they attack or not now. be interesting. They have a spell. Okay, another Shadow Creature, so yeah. If they attack with this, they die. If they did not feel like dying. Yeah. So whenever you're in a position where drawing land or drawing a spell is good, you're probably in a good position, and that's how that fall right there. So now we just get to pass. They have to top deck another blocker, and if they don't, they die. If the blocker doesn't have flying, then they have to chomp. So we're just in all kinds of good shape here. An Eternal Dragon, of course, even if they kill it, we get to get it back. Very, very strong card. Okay, well, we are going to attack with both here. Also, no reason not to attack with this shadow creature, unless you're afraid that I have a creature with shadow and haste. I don't think there's any way they can make this lose shadow and shuffle my creatures, but that was a good draw, especially with them at two, but I don't want to show it to them if I don't have to. I could have, like, an exile here on this. Okay. We might be seeing that here. Or they just take lethal damage. That works too. Alright, moving on to game number two. Felt like the 4 mana 5 5 was a really good way of pressuring them in this matchup. So I think I'm going to take out. Uh, did I show them one of the Chiefs? I don't think I showed them either. But I'll take out the regular one because spoils are the best. And we'll put in a Pillaging Horde. And Spark Spray is actually pretty good. They showed me, I think, two of the 3 mana 2 1 Shadow guy. So that's a great trade mana wise for us. And Exile, the most threatening creature they showed us was the Magister of Worth, and that's a white one, so no. But it is a decent hit for the Radiance Judgment. And yeah, I think we're going to run it back like this. All right, another excellent hand. Two lands, two mana card, three land cyclers, which is a few, but they do the job. Okay, another cycler. I don't think I cycle the spark spray here. Um, I've got so many other cycling cards, and I feel like the main reason I would be cycling is... Uh, so I hit a land, and I have three cards that essentially turn into a land if I need them to. I can take off this upkeep stop. Ooh, there's a lightning rift. Oh, now we're getting spicy. So I can play the lightning rift if 
we mm, what do I want to do I think I want to play this lightning rift uh, they can't counter it this turn and then even if we don't draw land if they play something we can like cycle spark spray draw a card kill their thing that's insane value yeah I think I think it's just too good to pass up on sorry Benalish Trapper I think you're a good card too but uh we do have five cycling cards in hand okay they cycled a card remember this is symmetrical in that sense so any other cycling lands they use while I have mana up I'm just going to use to ding them yup that is exactly what we were hoping would happen and uh, I don't even think I do this we're just going to <laughs> just gonna start going off I guess technically it was um, a consideration yes I would like to kill your thing um, it was a consideration to be mana efficient here it's like one of these instead it was probably better but I think we're kind of sitting pretty now anything they play without a lot of toughness is gonna be in trouble that counts <laughs> So we can cycle a Chartooth, kill their thing, put a land into play. It seems good to me. They get to get their other guy back, but I don't really care. Oh, nope. There we go. Make sure they don't get any shenanigans with this. Yes, we'll do that. to play the land and pass and we have so much more cycling <laughs> oh this is so fun we can cycle the solar blast now for extra value I really hope they play oh another small creature yes how do they know so now we get to cycle the solar blast shoot down both of their creatures draw a card <laughs> we're really going off with this deck and they can't counterspell anything we're doing either because okay that is almost annoying but we can just point both halves of the solar blast the lightning rift and the one damage cycle at that and then it's still going to die sure deal me four does not matter all right here we go so we'll cycle this Shoot this, shoot this again. Yes, let's use the ability. Let's use the ability again. They do get the brilliant halo back. Um, we draw a land, sure. So next turn. Not totally sure what the plan is. Could be like play Banalish Trapper, hold up some cycling shenanigans. It's just crazy to me how many cards we have in hand, how many threats we've killed. Okay, they're passing. Sure probably going for an eternal dragon next turn but as for right now don't really want to play into a power sink and I do want to get the trapper on the battlefield so let's just do this man red white control it's a lot of fun just when I thought red white aggro was just about the best deck out there. Frantic Search, do not care. Brilliant Halo, Fluster Storm. Fluster Storm might be worth some money in this set. It's not a bad one. Okay. 
So if they play the <clears throat> the brilliant halo from before on the cloud of fairies, we're going to shoot it down. Looks like they are not going to do that. Wonder how they're spending the rest of their mana here. Or if they're just not going to. Reanimate that, okay. I think we're going to kill that one with the Templar. This is just absurd value. Oops, I keep clicking on it wrong though. <laughs> yes. At some point I'm gonna start running out of lands. Okay, hasn't happened yet. Spark Spray, that's a good one too. Well, let's just drop this big dragon. Attack for one, I'm gonna stop on the upkeep as well. So even if they go like land magister, um, we can go Return Eternal Dragon to hand and Radiance Judgment. Okay, another one. Still doesn't matter. <laughs> this is a really absurd board state. Okay, planes. I think we only have a couple left in the deck at this point, if I remember correctly. Um, so now the question is, do I care about playing into the Magister? They are stuck on five lands right now, so they could have it. Um, I think I don't have a reason to run out the cougar, so I'll just play this slow. If they go for an exile effect on my eternal dragon, I can radiance judgment my own card and then return it to the battlefield or return it to my hand <laughs> the coming turn. Okay, we'll tap this guy, of course. You get to hit me for one, I accept. That's it, sure. I think we're winning this race. Beetleback Chief could draw out a Wrath. I'm not sure if I really want to. Okay, this is happening, sure. So we could go for the cheap now. They're still stuck on five mana. I I mean, they have four cards in hand. I feel like putting them on Magister makes a lot of sense, so I'm just going to play this slow. I don't really think there's a way we can die. We're actually pretty close to killing them. We have six points of burn here in the three cyclers. They might be dead. No, they're not dead to the Eternal Dragon, but they're it's pretty close. In fact, maybe the uh, Banalish guy should have attacked just because then they would be dead to it. Because I can cycle all of these and shoot them each time, I think. That's three, six, seven, eight. And then if they kill this, then I can bring it back, cycle, and then they're just dead. Is it a fancy play? Yes. Does it lose to any kind of life gain? Oh, for sure. But would it be a lot of fun? Also, yes. Okay, they have six lands now. That's kind of weird. That they're not going for anything here. Don't understand how they can beat the Eternal Dragon. Maybe they just straight up can't. But at this point, if they take another five, they're dead to any two cyclers, assuming they have no life gain. Um, there is life gain in the set, though, so I don't want to just assume they have nothing wait for them to tap out, or something like that. Now if they go for a Magister of Worth, we can just cycle, cycle, and they die. Um, 
Okay, so I guess they're storming off. I don't think I care as long as I kill them in response to whatever this is. This is potentially scary. Yeah, so that that's not going to work. We're just going to kill you. And we'll kill you again. Alright. Good games. Any white sources do we have? I think it's nine. Nine white sources, not counting the two noble Templars and the Eternal Dragon, so it's really twelve. And we have a cycle, and we're on the draw? I'm gonna keep it. It's a little bit greedy. <laughs> Okay, we found the white source. Easy. No hint to Turok, please. Nice. Faded it. Take off the upkeep stop once again. And let's lay down this trooper. Possible that the uh, change I made last game, which was Pillaging Horde number two over Chief number two should have been a change to the main. Okay. Um, I think I'm fine trading here. I'm not really the aggressor since I'm on the draw and theirs can hit for more damage than mine. Um, I guess I'm just playing this Trapper. Passing the turn. So they could have, um, I think it's called like Death Reap Ritual, which would draw them a card here. That would be kind of obnoxious. It's a four mana green and black enchantment. Oh, they have some kind of combat trick. Sudden Strength. Okay, that's annoying. Kind of wish I had the Radiance Judgment up as they did that, but we'll live. Okay, now I think we go for this Pillaging Horde. Hope we don't discard the chief. Anything else would be okay. That was one of the better discards. See if they have a way of killing this. Ooh, that is annoying. I don't think I care about the tapper as much as the 5-5 uh, five five in this spot, actually, so... Let's just hope they don't have a second edict. And we could have like an exile. Oh, that is a big, big guy. And it definitely punishes me for discarding, or letting the tapper die. Okay. So I guess we go for a beetleback chief here. Just put as much power onto the battlefield as possible. Hope we hit a land to double spell next turn. But this game is going to be a rough one at this point. I don't think you should do what the opponent's doing. I don't think you should go three colors splashing sudden strength and elephant guide, but it seems to be working out for them here. Uh, keep in mind, I think their strategy basically would not work at all if they uh, <laughs> were on the draw. Okay, so we get a nice big attack in here. They have an exile for this. Oh, that's so brutal. Yeah, can't do anything about that. That probably straight up wins them the game. So now I can Goblin Commando the Sultari Trooper which is probably one of my better options here. My other option is double spelling, but then they get a 3-3. So I think I just have to take my beats from that, kill this thing while I can. Yeah, so we could win this game, but I would not say we are favored. 
We need their cards effectively to do nothing here. I wonder if they pump. No, that's a bad sign for me then. 2-2 two, two Flyer. What is this? And a Phantom Nomad. That is bad for me too. Okay. Well, we're doing what we can here. Attack with these. Top card is a Trooper. We might make this trade. Yeah, I think we're just dead, actually. Sure. So they get their guy back. We get to play the Sultari Emissary. Um, we're going to trade with the Trooper, and we're going to Radiance Judgment here. So, not looking favored. They have something else big. That almost just, I mean, we're pretty dead here, right? Okay, sack a 1-1. One, one. Draw planes, and yeah, I think that's pretty much going to do it here. Like, we can let them untap if they draw land. We sack this. We are... Are we dead on board? We are. So, yeah. If we're dead on board if they draw land, I don't think it's worth playing out. So, scoop this one up. Unfortunate, but sometimes three-color stuff gets there, I guess. Um, Exile would have been excellent in this matchup. What else do we want? I think the Mist Moon Griffin is too slow. Maybe this thing is bad. Um, it's bad against the Edict. Yeah. Goblin Patrol feels a little clunky. Actually, this card... <laughs> it's almost not bad. The only problem is they can eventually pump and get around it. And that's assuming they don't um, play an Aura on it. Yeah, so I think we're running back like this and hoping they don't get the nut draw again. <laughs> that sudden strength really was brutal. Okay, we're going to keep this one. It's a little slow, but I think it's fine. Showed me a number of X1s as well. Not in a hurry to cycle this, to cycle either of them, really. Ah, uh, okay. I guess I will kill that. Planes, not the most exciting draw, but eh, they can't all be the best. Opponent seems to be... oh. Ooh, if they're stone raining themselves on turn two, I think that's a good sign for me. Yeah, Phantom Nomad. Unfortunately, it's not the Soltari Trooper that would just die to this, but... Still pretty good for me here, I think. Yeah. Yeah, we can just hit land drops, sit back, relax. Eventually get some six drops onto the battlefield. Passing here. Still drawing. Not the most exciting stuff. I think there's an argument for firing off the cycle on Spark Spray, but I don't really feel like I need to. I'm not under any pressure, and now they're going to drop 3 mana 2-1, and I'm going to look like a genius, so... <laughs> ah, never mind. Never lucky. Beelback Chief... Yikes, can't play that one, and I don't want a mountain cycle at this point, so one more turn of taking two and doing nothing. <laughs> Feels like we've let them rebuild a little bit too much on mana now. We're not really ahead. I need to 
evade an edict here. That would be really bad for me. So they can actually activate the outpost with the mana prism. Okay. Gonna start off with this because it does have vigilance. Again, hoping we fade that edict, but not too much I can do about it. Looks like they're just activating outpost, sure. Three mana, four. Okay. That's extremely bad for me. It's like the worst possible thing they could have for me. <laughs> Okay, so now pretty straightforward play line here. I have to play the cougar. We get to hold up a spark spray. I mean, there's an argument for playing the beetleback chief, but I don't like it. We're behind quite a bit on life here. If they have an edict, do we just lose? Kind of feels like that. And they do. Must be nice. Really must. Okay. So now, I think at this point we have to shrink this. It's just getting to be too painful. Uh, no, they have mana for a 3 mana 2 1, so I'll let them show me that. Nice, so we did get rewarded there. Unfortunately, it took about a million turns too long for that to happen. So now I think we have to play this Beetleback Chief because our life total is so low we just need to try to stabilize in terms of bodies. Trade the 2-2 two -two for the 3-2. Chump this and put a 1-1 one -one on that. But I'm pretty sure the opponent has all spells in hand because I think they've been I mean, they were kind of mana screw. Oh god, why are you playing Dark Ritual in this deck? Ah, oh, I'm losing to such jank. Oh no, this is a Death Grasp? Oh, it's a Chainer's Edict flashback. That was not the most impressive thing that I that could have happened there, I think. Yeah. Okay, so now we do this. Three life is not a ton. Mountain is not what we wanted there. Okay, three mana, two two. It's kind of a spell shaper. They can naturalize stuff. Basically, I am dead unless I draw something. And that does not count, so we're going to pass the turn. And if they just attack all, we are donezo. Unfortunately. <laughs> I don't think you should be playing three color decks in this format unless it's like three color control or maybe storm or something like that, but I don't know. If you draw poorly enough, I guess, <laughs> you can lose to any deck. And even though their mana didn't totally make sense to me, they did have some good cards, so we'll give that to them. All right, we are back with round number three. Opponent's presumably going to play first. Got a decent hand here. Nothing crazy, but not bad. Putrid Imp. Well, not sure we're going to spark spray that, but we could. Only gets uh, plus one, plus one if they put seven cards into the graveyard, which right now is not possible. I guess there's an argument for just doing it on my turn. Um, if they have anything they want to reanimate, then that denies them any draw steps toward um, discarding a fatty. Okay, I mean, I'll kill this. If the name of the game is preserving my life total, then sure. So torture, uh, so it's just a two mana deal for yeah I mean I'll I'll vote death but it doesn't do anything. Um, all right 
Now we will play Soltari Emissary. Pretty straightforward. Next turn we can cycle a Solar Blast or activate Emissary and cycle Templar, but I don't think we're cycling Templar at this point. Um, so I guess just hold up Solar Blast cycling mana. And pass the turn. All right, cycle a land, sure. Uh huh. Sure, I guess I am killing that with the Goblin Commando some number of turns in the future. Cycle a Solar Blast here, but I think it's just better to hold on to it. Just pass the turn. Yeah. Now I think we're just... Uh, I could just trade these. Hmm. No, I think I'm fine going down on life here and not holding up the Solar Blast, but it's definitely tempting to do it the other way. Actually, whenever you're um, attacking with this card, you should always, if you're planning on giving it Shadow, make sure you go to your attack step attack with it, then give it shadow before blocks, because if your opponent just taps it down, you're gonna feel silly just wasting a mana. Ooh. Sure. I guess it's a 4-4. Can't kill it with the Solar Blast, unfortunately, so I'm getting punished here. Now... Okay, well, I can kill that thing and then double block, so I guess that's a line. Uh, I'm not sure which I care about more here, but nice that I have an easier turn now that they played this. And yeah, we're just planning on double blocking here, trying to stem the bleeding, preserve my life total. The Noble Templar should be extremely good against this kind of aggressive deck. Something with a big bot and vigilance is usually really important. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, we could, I don't want to take five, so I guess I will two for one myself this way, not the other way. And now we get to play the Noble Templar, and if we attack into it and they block, we get to cycle the Solar Blast, which is some good value there. Yeah, I think I like the way this game is shaping up. Uh, we are going to need Quad Red to be able to do both next turn, but hey, we have two draws at it, so... Just need them not to, like, edict my Templar. That would be the worst. Or the... yeah, that is worse. <laughs> ah, classic. Okay. Um, so I think I just want to get this onto the battlefield instead of the Beetleback Chief. Whoops, I should not tap like that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that was pretty brutal. Any edicts when... Our board is clear, and we're playing a 6-drop. It's kind of been the bane of this deck so far. Uh, okay, Putrid Imp. You got it. Do not care. <laughs> Probably cycling the Solar Blast to kill it. Interesting that they didn't attack. I, I think I do just kill this. It's decent value. Ah, uh, wait, no. They can discard their last card and then it gets threshold. Uh, I don't really care. We draw a card regardless. They probably don't see the line. Oh, they did see the line. Okay. Okay. 
your last card was a land. Sure. Interesting. Uh, we don't... Uh, actually, never mind. We can play this Beetleback Chief. And then we can hold up Cycle on the Eternal Dragon. Maybe just playing Eternal Dragon makes more sense, but this is fine. Um, okay, so I think how this works is because this is a triggered ability, I can respond to it with the Eternal Dragon. So, I guess I just... Do I just block everything here? I don't see why not. Yeah, this seems fine to me. Uh, technically, I guess I should have put the Moon Mist Griffin, or Mist Moon Griffin on the other one. But, like I said, this is fine. Uh, doesn't matter which order they're in, because now I cycle this. And let's reanimate this nice 5-5 five, five flyer here. Okay. All right, pass the turn, draw a card. That's a good one, it trades with the thing, so I think we're just going to get greedy and try to get in for damage now. There's probably a reason not to play this land, but I can't think of it, and my deck uses a lot of mana, so I think I'm just playing it. Go ahead. If you edict me, I will sack this one. Sure. Did this deal them a damage? Uh, is this a zombie? Oh, it is. Must be nice. Oh, and this can't block either. That's it's relevant. relevant. Um, but, but it doesn't, doesn't have flying. flying. Okay. Well. Uh, I, I guess, guess we're, we're attacking, attacking for five. five. I think, I think that, that makes the most sense, sense here. Yeah. yeah. And then, then we, we can attack for seven, seven next turn, and that's lethal. lethal. Not really sure, sure how they could kill me here, here but there's, there's probably a way, so I will prevent them from doing that if we can. can. Yeah, actually, um, yeah, oh, yeah, now they're just dead to the Eternal Dragon, so, yep, no answer to that, and no Fireball effect. Even if they had a Fireball, I think they lose there, actually, so that's kind of cool. Um, how do we want to sideboard against them? I think the Exile is probably coming in again, that's a good one in this kind of matchup. Take out probably the Pillaging Horde, and anything else we want to change... This card is tough for them to beat. It's a lot of good value for me. I'm not sure we want the second, though. It seems like our deck is actually pretty well set up against theirs. The Spark Sprays maybe are a little shorter on targets, but I think this is fine, so let's run it back. Alright. Totally fine hand here. Trooper is not going to do a ton of blocking early, but got three lands, got some flexible stuff, so. If they go for another aura on a zombie, we can judgment it. Ooh, dark ritual. Okay. Mesmeric fiend. Yep. I guess it's not card disadvantage. 
technically, <laughs> not until Fiend dies. But I think in general you're probably better waiting until you just take your turn two lane drop to do that. It's not like I'm going to be able to um, play any great cards on turn one. And I do have double spark spray in my deck as well, so. Alright, so opponent dropped a future damp, nothing too scary there. Just go with the mountain and pass the turn. They took our trooper, sure. It's actually really annoying that they know about this radiance judgment in terms of that plus two plus two aura they showed me. Okay, take out this upkeep stop. That was not the best draw. I think we're gonna be cycling radiance judgment here, especially since they know about it, but Okay, we'll take our two, go to their end of turn, we'll cycle the judgment. See if we hit a mountain maybe for the Beetleback Chief. Well, there's a Lightning Rift. That is insane versus them, so I like that. And we did hit the Charge of Cougar as well. I wonder if they just scoot to this Lightning Rift. I mean, they can't really beat it. We have three cards in hand with Cycling. Probably start by cycling this Charge with Cougar to hit second red. Yeah. Um, no, I guess there's no reason to actually do it right now. We can hit a lane drop regardless, so let's be patient. Basically, this prevents them from playing the plus two, plus two aura pre combat, so. I think it's better. So now we get to do this. Which just feels great. Kill your thing. Yes. Get a card back in our hand. And let's put another card into our hand. Right, they're just passing. That's a good sign for me. I think we just run out of beetle back sheep now. Feel like they're just dead. Could be wrong. Um, next turn, we're probably just going to start hard casting these noble templars. Sure, that's a reason to, well. Consider shocking it briefly and then realize just playing the Templar works better. Can't even block though, so they need some kind of terror effect for the Templar. So we're just getting there. I do not know how they win this game. Spend all of our mana. Very good hand as well. I think this game is probably just done. Even if they go mountain, put the enchantment on this thing, it's a 4 4 flanking. We still bounce there, and that's fine. And of course, we have the exile for future turns. Yeah, no attacks. That's probably just going to seal the deal. Uh, there could be a Wrath worth playing around. I don't know any off the top of my head, and I kind of just want to play another Noble Templar here. So I think I'm going to. And then next turn, even if they chump, we might have lethal, like, cycling this and pinging their face, something like that.
Yeah, so Lightning Rift did not do a ton this game. Uh, I guess it's triggering right now, but we'll just pretend we can shoot their thing. Obviously, that's not happening. Sure. You have a 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, I'm guessing they're just dead. I'm not even going to try to figure it out for sure. I think we just attack all here and they probably go to a very small life total and die to the Eternal Dragon. Going to eat my 2-2, two, two, 3, 6, 7, 8, go to 1, and the Eternal Dragon is just good game at that point, so let's fire it off. Looks like they scooped. Yep, so not the most exciting performance after starting off 6-0 undefeated in this format, but the deck still felt really, really strong. I uh, felt like most of our loss could be attributed to, I don't know, variants or just maybe the matchup being bad, but Regardless, I had fun playing that. Um, just Lightning Rift in general with tons of cyclers is fun. Shocking things and drawing cards. It's just really good value. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you again soon.